question. What do you think you would tell your 20 something year old self if you could go back in time? What advice would you give or what advice do you wish you had known or listened to back then? Do you think there are things you could have done differently that would impact how you're feeling now or how you're aging? Today, we're getting a little personal and I'm gonna share with you the seven things or seven of the things <laughs> of the laundry list, I wish I had known sooner that could be helping me age better or that could have at least made my life better over the years if I had started them sooner. Hi, I'm Kelsey Ale. I'm a certified functional nutritionist and a restorative wellness practitioner, and I'm the founder of Audrey. We are a collective that helps women in their 30s and 40s learn how to age well and love doing it. And if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post a new video. So I have learned so much in my 15 plus years in the health and wellness industry as a professional, and I really feel so fortunate to know what I know now and to have the information and resources I do now so that I can do better for myself. But that wasn't always the case. And looking back, I kind of have to laugh to keep from crying sometimes, thinking about either what I didn't know or it's just some of the things that I was doing that definitely weren't helpful. And we'll start with the most obvious one, and that is SPF. It's crucial. Protect your skin from UV rays by using sunscreen every day. This was not advice that I ever followed until I got to my 30s. And in hindsight, I was doing some really stupid stuff like laying out for hours at a time without any sort of sun protection, like actively trying to get tan because you know in the 90s it was all about that base tan life, not that SPF life. And so I look back at the choices I made to lay out or to go hiking without wearing a hat or sun protection for years and how much damage have I done to my skin that I'm, I'm now working to undo that could have just been prevented if I had known how important it was to wear sunscreen or chosen to practice that habit. The next thing I wish I had known or paid attention to is the importance of blood sugar balance. By eating balanced meals and avoiding blood sugar spikes, you can prevent a lot of inflammation and then everything that comes along with it. So just because when I was younger, I wasn't gaining weight, it didn't mean that I was healthy and what I was eating was healthy. I was experiencing depression and anxiety and bad PMS. And all of those things can be related to your blood sugar levels and whether or not those levels are balanced. And then there was the whole low fat phase where they re replaced fats in foods with more sugar. And I remember my go-to snacks was like, uh, low fat graham crackers with reduced fat peanut butter. Like how many tablespoons of sugar was I eating every time I ate that snack? And that's not to mention the sugary cocktails on the weekends. <laughs> Blood sugar is related to diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even Alzheimer's. So I'm obviously paying close attention to it now and kind of trying to make up for lost time and reverse some of the damage that was done. I just really wish I had known sooner. Also, over-exercising is bad for you in general. I don't know if it was the heroin chic um, of the era or just my internalized anxiety, but I know I used to over-exercise. I would spend hours a week on the elliptical. I even had one in my home. I used to go for hours long bike rides before going to workout classes, and I was afraid of lifting weights. And while exercise is vitally important for aging well, rest and recovery are also so important. And I'm pretty sure I was just burning my adrenals all the way out by pushing myself to keep up with this intense endurance workout routine that was basically all stress and cardio and not nearly enough resistance training and definitely not enough rest. I also really wish I had realized sooner that cardio isn't just for weight loss. Regular cardio exercise does improve heart health and it helps you age gracefully. It's also great for your skin because it improves your circulation. Because once I stopped over-exercising, it took me a long time to figure out a way to get good cardio in that was beneficial and didn't burn me out. So that balance between over-exercising and working out in a good way that's good for your body is crucial, especially for women as we start to depend more on our adrenal health as we move towards perimenopause um, and our hormone balance starts to rely more on our adrenals, not burning your yourself out with over exercise is going to be really important and is really important. Um, and that kind of tangentially brings me to my next thing. I really wish I had known more about the importance of protein when I was younger and really understood what it meant 
Protein is so important, especially for women, especially when you're working out and doing healthy amounts of resistance training. And here's the thing, you probably need more of it than you realize, and you're probably eating a lot less of it than you think. Um, at least that was the case for me. Getting enough protein in your diet helps you maintain muscle mass and it keeps your body strong. And it's also really important to consume enough protein for tissue repair and for supporting those healthy collagen levels that we really value now. <laughs> but most importantly, it helps protect you from age-related muscle loss, which can lead to frailty. And it also helps you recover and rebuild after your workout. So I was a vegetarian and a vegan for a long time. And I know for certain during those years, I was not getting nearly enough protein to meet my needs. So I really wish I had paid attention to that sooner. So those are some of the body tips I wish I had known sooner. Let's talk about some of the mental things that I wish I had known or done differently. First, work-life balance is key. Taking time for self-care and relaxation is essential for mental and physical well-being. And this was not something I really embraced in my late twenties and early to mid thirties as I was working on building a career. I think I felt guilty about making time for hobbies or for not working when I had plenty of energy because I thought I should be being productive if I could be, but that's not the case. And it's so important to establish yourself and your life outside of your work. It connects you more with yourself, which ultimately brings a deeper sense of peace and it can also help so much with anxiety. And anytime a report comes out that refers to interviews with people on their deathbeds, we have yet to hear a single person say that of all the things they wish they'd done differently, it was that they wish they had worked more. So think about that. Next, how you talk to yourself matters. Practicing positive self-talk and embracing self-love and self-acceptance can improve your confidence and your overall happiness. And I definitely have been guilty over my lifetime of lots of negative self-talk and self-criticism. I think a lot of us as women just do that. I think most women would say it's a practice they have to actively work at unlearning. But I know for a long time, the negative self-talk for me was so ingrained in me that I didn't even see it for what it was. I just know I felt bad about myself on a regular basis, I was really good at pointing out the things I had done wrong. And even now it's a thing I'm actively working on undoing. But having supportive conversations with yourself in your head is so important. Um, and especially when it comes to aging and our thoughts on aging. Studies have shown that women who have a more positive outlook on aging actually end up being healthier because they end up doing the things that serve their health best, like getting regular checkups and exams and addressing symptoms earlier than they would if they were feeling bad about getting older or trying to ignore or deny it. So this positive self-talk and um, self-acceptance isn't just good for our mental health, but it really can end up being a perspective shift that you need to make healthcare self-care. Last, I really wish I had started working on my perfectionism earlier. It's such a tangled web to unweave, but the reality is that life feels more fun, at least for me, when I'm less afraid of making mistakes. Learning from your mistakes is a, such an important part of growth and, and self-improvement and, and just exploration in life in general. And the actor John Cleese has this really great quote. It's actually a fantastic monologue. I'll link it below, but he says, Nothing will stop you being creative so effectively as the fear of making a mistake. So you've got to risk saying things that are silly and illogical and wrong. And the best way to get the confidence to do that is to know that while you're being creative, nothing is wrong. There's no such thing as a mistake and any drivel may lead to the breakthrough. And I know that's speaking specifically about creativity, but I think it really applies to all of life. When we're afraid of being wrong or doing something we shouldn't have, we're so severely limiting our exploration and our experimentation in life, probably fueling that negative self-talk, but it's the experimentation and exploration that really helps us learn about life and to grow. And most importantly, it helps us to build confidence in ourselves that we're not unlovable if something we try doesn't work out. So for me, I really wish I had been able to start looking at that sooner and started practicing being more comfortable with making mistakes sooner because it really loosens everything up in the best way possible. Like, can you imagine what your life would look like if you weren't afraid of making a mistake? Maybe it's just me, I don't think it is, um, but getting comfortable with making mistakes has been a game changer for my life. So that's it. 
That's my personal list of seven of the pieces of advice I would give to my 20 something year old self, or at least a few of the things I wish I'd known sooner. Hopefully that resonated with you. And if it did, and you wanna learn more about how to age well and love doing it, go ahead and give us a subscribe. Uh, also like this video, please. It's really helpful for our channel. Um, and make sure to hit the bell to be notified when we post a new one. Also make sure you check out the description below for more resources, including our daily habits calendar, where you can join us on the journey to build the right habits for better aging. Uh, we also have our better aging basics course that you can look at, and we have our real age quiz to help you assess how effective your current lifestyle habits are and see how they may be impacting your aging process and your overall health. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments uh, and I'll see you next time.